Chapter 4, Part 12 The changes to Dorogoromon's body were dramatic and terrifying. Fenri Lugamon and Kazuchimon took to the air, the former slashing with the hellfire blades on its legs, the latter with its lightning swords. Professor Ryusenji's massive download from the source Dimjimon distended the dragon's body until it lost all shape and form, resembling a wriggling bead of liquid. This feels just like the time we digivolved into Halugamon, doesn't it? It's like an experiment gone wrong, Eiji said of the roiling mass below. It looked like the result of some misbegotten genetic engineering. The data dump melted into the gigantic mass, slowly coating it in static and other visual noise. It was rebuilding itself, mutating into something similar yet entirely alien. A new type of Digimon and an ill omen. Professor Ryusenji named the abomination Dex Dorugoramon. It looked unique, unlike anything in the real world. It was a creature one might see in a dark and unsettling painting, an approximation of an angel of death. Had it carried the Grim Reaper's sickle, no one would have batted an eye. Witness, the product of Death X evolution. I've used data from the Source Digimon as a reference to force Dorogoromon into one last Digivolution, creating Dex Dorogoromon, the Digicore Predator. The D Death X evolution? Predator? The thought called to Eiji's mind images of all the Apex Predators. Wolves, Lions... Orcas. The eaters in an eat or be eaten world. A Digimon that eats other Digimon? Leon said in disbelief. Before either of them could get another word out, Dex Durgoromon began flapping all ten of its wings, creating a torrent of damp, sickly air that swirled around the source domain. For some reason, it caused Eiji to recall the loss of his beloved dog. Kansa claimed it in the end. It was the same age as Eiji when it finally passed, which meant it lived a good long life in dog years. He knew it was time when the poor pup stopped eating. He recalled his parents' surprise that he was the one most devastated by the dog's passing especially since his mother had been so fond of it. The memories were all so clear. Eiji knew at once that just like his aging, suffering pup, Dexter Goromon was rotting from the inside. He could smell it in the air. Fascinating! Do you see what's so special about this Digimon, Eiji? Professor Ryu Senji asked, as though he were running a lecture. Eiji struggled to formulate an answer, and was further interrupted by a wave of data that washed over his virtual monitor. The vast majority of the fields in the analysis sheet were filled in as unknown, but thermal imaging picked up some unusual signatures. Are those digicores? The thing has multiple digicores inside it! A.G. blurted out. Exactly so. Very keen eyes you've got there, A.G. Now, why would one Digimon contain multiple Digicores, Leon? Dex Dorogoromon may not be based on Dorogoromon, but that's no longer Tartarus partner Digimon, Leon shouted, trying to comprehend the situation as much as answer the question. Neither he nor Eiji noticed that Koska lost consciousness as a result of a critical error in Dorogoromon's Digicore leading up to the Death X evolution. What did you do to Dorumon? Eiji demanded. Dorumon's Digicore is safe. Its major functions have been paused, aside from powering the interface on its head. 
the professor explained. If it is to be nothing more than a vessel, what need does it have for personality? Why, its personality might even be a vulnerability, a hindrance. That was how he'd done it. He disabled Dodemon's security by disabling its core functions and installing all of the data he downloaded from the source Digimon into the unsuspecting creature. Digimon were only supposed to have one Digicore each. That was common knowledge. Yet this monster had Digicores running along its spine, lined up in the spots between the wings that protruded from its backside. Collectively, they appeared to function as an additional Digicore. The Death X evolution offers Dexter Goromon new life as an undertype, a Digimon that survives by making use of the Digicores of others. A zombie, you mean, Eiji repeated. Visions of zombie flicks and games danced through his head. Undead corpses that bit the living, spreading a virus that killed its host and brought them back to life as a new conscript in the undead army. The zombies multiply like rats, and humanity is doomed. It was a familiar fiction, and occasionally an organism in the real world would be described as behaving in a similar manner, mostly parasites and fungi that proliferate within the host, kill it, then assume control of the host's corpse. It all begged the question, was Dex Dorogoromon even a Digimon to begin with? A quintessential zombie, a single vessel that has consumed and stored the data of countless other Digicores. The armor on its exterior is doing all it can to give the beast shape, but they are ultimately nothing more than restraints working over time to keep the vast amounts of Digicore data, its inarts, if you will, from bursting out into the open. It was nothing more than a suit of armor possessed by countless spirits, all at once. A collection of Digicore data masquerading as a single Digimon. To its credit, the armor kept it looking relatively humanoid, if only so Professor Ryusenji could easily control it. That was the best theory AG had, anyway. Death X Evolution, as the name implies, is a different evolution en route to death, Professor Ryusenji said as Dex Dorugoromon quietly left the ground. Dorumon's dying? Dex Dorugoromon is now the Digimon closest to the source Digimon. The purest expression of Digivolution yet, Professor Rio Sanji shouted with twisted glee. With decrypted data from just one of the three sectors, Professor Rio Sanji was already closing in on the root cause of Digivolution. The source Digimon. The Digimon that waited at the end he believed, of a long road of amassing ever more data and forcing countless digivolutions. The professor imagined that Death X evolution brought one step closer to the source Digimon, an imitation of the very beginnings of digital life. If he was correct, then life was nothing more than a permanent state of death. METAL IMPULSE! The demon wolf laid down. The god of thunder sank to their knees. Fenri Lugamon and Kazuchimon were helpless in the face of an attack not even Hellfire could stop. Professor Ryusenji cackled. <laughs> At the end of our lives, atop a throne of endless beginnings, sits my masterpiece. Dex Dorugoramon. Dex Dorugoromon scored a direct hit. AG sat in the Digicore, unmoving, eyes fixed directly ahead. He couldn't tell if this was reality, a nightmare, or both. Seconds later, he was visited by visions of failure and loss. The source Digimon. If this is the sort of awful thing he can do with just a third of the data decrypted... Eiji muttered in despair. 
Fenri Lugamon tried to establish a protective wall of hellfire that would burn any who touched it. But Dex Dorogoramon's attack extinguished it as one blew out a candle. Any Digimon below ultimate level would have been vaporized on the spot. Even in the relative safety of his mega level Digicore, Eiji could feel the Reaper's sickle at his throat. An undead Digimon. I can't believe it, Leon said. Eiji noticed that Kazuchimon's wrath of lightning had vanished as well. He was researching a zombie virus after all, Eiji said with a strained smile as he recalled his first visit to DDL. If he manages to fully decrypt the data, it's game over. Yeah, and if he manages to single-handedly control the source Digimon's power, he'll be a threat to the real world too. He could easily bend it to his will, Leon agreed. Ryu Sanji's devilish curiosity and lack of regard for anyone other than himself would cost even more lives than it already had. Dex Dorogoramon would rule over a nation of the dead, feasting on their blood. A dark serpent flying over piles of corpses at the end of the world. A shell of its former self. And I should note, I'm not even controlling the creature anymore. The professor said in amazement, his video projection holding its hands up away from the controls. AG and Leon couldn't believe their ears. I am not sending a single command. Dextorogoramon is a completely autonomous program that follows its own instincts. I may as well be in a self-driving car. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, AG, that just leaves me with the matter of the vaccine type Ryudamon and the virus type Lugamon. Once I've devoured their digicores, my work will be complete. The professor's master plan revealed itself. To have Dex Dorogoramon simply consume the remaining prototype Digimon course and function as an all-purpose prototype Digimon. Eliminate the need for cooperation, forced or otherwise. Then I'll finally be able to decrypt the remaining two-thirds of the data. Ah, what a journey it's been. Perhaps this last part, at least, will go smoothly. Tarleton. Dex Dorogoramon shouted. It still had command of Dorogoromon's attack, but the effect was completely different. Where Dorogoromon's was a massive shockwave, Dex Dorogoromon's was completely silent. Eiji turned to find that a section of the stone circle completely vanished into thin air, as though it had never existed. Dex Dorogoromon erased part of the source domain with a single attack. Eiji felt a scream of terror building in the far reaches of his mind. This is real bad. It just vanished. Leon was also at a loss of words. Fenri Lugamon and Kazuchimon's godlike reflexes allowed them to evade the attack. But that was no guarantee they'd be able to stand again. And there was certainly no way to block it. Get out of here, Eiji, Leon said sternly. What are you talking about? Eiji snapped. He wasn't about to let Leon sacrifice himself again. Think about it. If Dexterogoromon eats you and Fenrilugamon, it's all over, Leon said matter-of-factly. That was the worst-case scenario. Dexterogoromon ate all three prototype Digimon, decoded the rest of the source domain's data, and handed Professor Ryusenji 100% of the source Digimon's power. Ryudamon was still restrained and unable to fight, which meant Eiji was the last line of defense. You're telling me to run? But I can hear the fear in your voice, Eiji said in an accusatory tone. Leon flashed a pained grin. <laughs> Dextorogoromon is scary. So is Professor Ryu Senji, frankly. Leon. Leon had looked up at the professor ever since he was a young boy, drawn in by Tomonori's professional charisma. As his respect grew, however, so too did fear take root in his heart. He had to muster many times the courage age needed in order to stand up to the professor now. Despite being Leon Alexander, the legendary hacker everyone knew as Judge. But... But... I... 
I've made up my mind. You searched for me until you found me. So I'm going to fight for you. Fight to protect you. <laughs> well, I decline. Eiji shouted. Fenri Lugamon's fur stood on end. What? I curled up in my futon and cried until I puked. Then I crawled back in the futon and cried some more. And I'm not gonna do that again! A.G. wished he could forget that period entirely. But strangely, though he'd never felt so dead inside in that moment, he was also filled with an intense desire to survive, to work through the pain and carry on living. <laughs> you cried for me, huh? Even so, I don't think it's wise for you to stay and fight. Shut your trap! Fenri Lugamon said it themselves. We fought tooth and nail to come find you both. Cause we're pals. I'm not gonna turn my back on you now. Pals as in... Friends? Yeah, even though it can be a pain. Fenri Lugamon let out an owl that shook the entire source domain. The ten-winged angel of death perked up. Like a spider that felt its web shift with the weight of its prey. So, we can be friends again? As long as you don't mind being stuck with me. I know it's not always easy. They turn toward their target. Professor Tomonori Ryusenji. I can't do it. I can't beat the professor. Leon, come on! Eiji turned to look at Kazuchimon in disbelief. After all they'd been through, Leon had to be capable of defeating his mentor. The professor means the world to me. He made my life possible. But maybe with you here, I can muster the courage. You, Pulsmon, and Lugamon. You overthink things too, don't you? Once a hacker, always a hacker, Leon said. Conflicted as he was, he knew he couldn't stand by and let someone play God. I get it. Us Codecrackers don't have it easy either. <laughs> Listen, I know we're technically on different sides, but I believe in you, AG. I believe in your connection to Lugamon. Kazuchimon reached out and touched the interface on Fenri Lugamon's forehead. That was the signal. Tens of thousands of lines of code flew between the two Digimon, without either of them uttering a word. We're committed to making our way in the digital world, Eiji replied, opening himself to Leon's feelings. You came and found me. Yeah, we did. Eiji had a part to play. The sense of connection, of finding one's own way in the digital world, was everything to a code cracker. Eiji, I grant you our power. You've proven yourself to be a true code cracker, and more than capable of wielding it. The thunder got transformed into a massive blade of lightning. Fusion! Everything moved at the speed of light. Pulsmon's Digicore unlocked a deep-seated memory of the thunder god known as Takemikazuchi, the first sumo wrestler and the god of swords. It used this memory to transform itself into a sword another Digimon could wield. Kazuchimon was one of the few mega-level Digimon capable of pulling off such a feat. The power of Takemikazuchi is yours! Kazuchimon became the Thunder God's longsword and affixed itself to Gleipnir, the ropes that once bound the God Slayer Fenri Lugamon. Fenri Lugamon Takemikazuchi stood ready to do battle with the monster who dared to play God. Fenri Lugamon wielded a just and mighty blade, the pride and joy of the hacker Leon Alexander. Is this how much you've come to despise me, Leon? The professor asked, having weathered the scorn heaped upon him. He stared down the sword containing his pupil. 
I cannot hold my head high and live with pride until I have bested you, Leon replied. You've gone too far, Professor Ryosenji, A.G. added. Fenri Lugamon took Takemikazuchi in their mouth and stood firm. If Tomonori became king of the Source Domain and succeeded in mind-linking with the Source Digimon, he would be unstoppable. You may want to consume everything in sight, but you're about to get eaten yourself. We've got no choice but to fight for our survival. This was it. Pale blue flames erupted from Fenri Lugamon's body. Oh shoot. Multiple warnings from Eiji's mind link timer washed over his virtual monitor. It was all or nothing now. This one attack, the full fury of fire and lightning combined, was their only chance. One strike for the living against a monster who could consume death in a futile attempt to evade it. The Digicore Predator followed its programming and greedily greeted the charging demon wolf with open arms. I shall consume you. All your abilities, your effort, your dreams, your future, your life. Professor Ryosenji bellowed. Dex Dorogoromon's ten wings formed a massive maw and opened wide, ready to swallow Fenri Lugamon. I shall crush you. Shut up. The collective thoughts of Eiji Leon, Fenri Lugamon and Kazuchimon, their friendship, traveled faster than light. Ultimate War Blade Takemi Kazuchi! Together they swore their lives to the digital world and bound their wills together. This wasn't the end. It was merely the beginning. Their sharpened blade struck the opening blow in a brand new story. The End